Because we share. Because we share. All right, so my name's Connor Krakowski. I assume you all know why you're here, uh, why I'm here. Uh, I hope title gives that away. So I, title is, I just bought it, IBM Z890, now what? Well, bought it a couple months ago. It's been a couple months of quite the adventure. So, and that's what this entire presentation is about. So who am I? All right, well, I had a computer in my hands at 18 months old. Uh, my parents gave me a system and I believe it was an IBM Aptiva. So you could say I've come full circle with IBM. Uh, none of my toys stayed together for very long as a kid. I, I learned what a screwdriver was and I used it to my, the best of my ability. Uh, I had a craving to learn more about electronics. These chips inside of all these devices intrigued me. And so I, uh, aspired to become an electrical engineer and uh, so I started collecting vintage computers about two three years ago um, and well it, it's the reason why would probably be because I it, it's everything simpler you can see everything instead of having a couple million transistors on a die you have a couple hundred TTL logic gates, chips, and it's quite easy to understand and learn the basics of digital electronics that way. Uh, Starts collecting slowly, some single microcomputers, Apple IIs, things like that, Commodore 64s. But it wasn't long before, well, I was filling up the back of my truck with stuff. Um, and you, you will notice that that is N026 key punch for, I'm sure, some of the people in the room are familiar. Um, so, anybody want to guess how much I paid for that? Some people know. A little, little more, $9 on eBay. So, some other stuff there. And, and this, um, those are 3270 terminals, terminal controller. Um, there's, there's another terminal controller, a smaller one. So. Uh, yeah, and, and also this. So this is a Data General Nova 4. I drove to Minnesota and back to get that from Maryland, 2,000 mile round trip or so. So yeah, it was all downhill from here. My, my parents basically accepted the fact, they said, no more, please, but they knew it wasn't going to stop. Uh, so then this happens um, on a Vich computer mailing list. Uh, Kind of off topic, but you know, I know some people are interested and post about it, and I, I responded accordingly, of course. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we, we moved into a new house, and there were apparently two air exchangers in the house, and the one in the basement needed work, so there was literally no heat in the basement, so I wasn't joking. Um, <laughs> There were, of course, warnings from the concerned, some close friends of mine. Uh, Dave, he actually has his own Z890. And yeah, um, then of course, there were jokes from the not so concerned. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, um, I. So this didn't stop me. Uh, I also, I'd already bid on it uh, like the second it came up <laughs> without even thinking of how much it weighed or whatever. So I, so I started planning. Uh, I talked to my parents about getting a new machine. They were like, God, no, please. And I said, oh, don't worry. It's only 1,500 pounds, about seven feet deep, three feet wide, five feet tall, six feet tall, something like that. So. Uh, so I, I realized I was pretty much screwed moving this thing. I, I weigh like 120 pounds. I, could, I can barely push this thing across the floor. Um, so I realized I had to take two trips to get this thing. Uh, one to take out most everything out of the rack and the next trip take the rest out and move the rack itself. Although I didn't know how much the rack alone weighed. Uh, so. But before I realized it, uh, I had won the machine for $237.39. <laughs> and you can see at the time, uh, well, actually, this was quite a bit after. Only 250 people even looked at it. This was actually, I think, even after I posted about it. So you can 
see how many people actually even care about an old mainframe. So, and about a week later, uh, it began. I uh, worked out with the people who were holding it. And by the way, I purchased this from Rutgers University in New Jersey. Uh, so they, I told them I was going to take two trips. I was going to disassemble the machine. They said, that's fine. Uh, and they'd help me load it. So I took apart. This was the first day. Uh, went from everything in the front to basically stripped down to just the uh, CP cage and the IO cage. Uh, and yeah, basically all that was left was those cages. And that was the back of my truck. I actually had, uh, I had lunch at my grandparents' house. So I, I, had to, I had to come back and with this truckload of stuff. Um, so you can see the CPs there, very, very static protected. I, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I basically figured if, if I can get it in the basement, it, it, that's good enough for me. Um, it will be a great paperweight, at least. Um, so then there was the big move. Uh, I had two friends come with me. I had someone who was nearby in the area that came and helped. Uh, so I came up with my truck and a trailer. And you can see there are the two very large. That's the uh, IO cage, and that's the CP booklet cage. Just huge, heavy things. Uh, two people to move that. Uh, so both those came out of the rack, and there, there's what it looked like from my position. I, I made sure my friends were at least somewhat safe. I, I, so, yeah. Uh, and then the rack on the trailer. Uh, basically, we uh, rolled it up to the back of the trailer, and three people, just three, four people, just lifted from the bottom and up and tilted it up on the trailer. Uh, it was actually me and my friends trying to figure out how we're going to get this thing up on the trailer. And one of the guys working there said, oh, let me help. He comes up, and my friends are just about to get ready, and he just lifts the thing up. And he wasn't a big guy either. I, was, I wasn't sure who I just met, but <laughs> I, I, uh, it, considering there's like a two-inch thick steel plate in the bottom of that thing, I, I was impressed. Um, so. And everything was going great, right? Uh, no, I had to go jinx it. Uh, it wasn't going to fit underneath the deck. And this is the first roadblock of the entire project. So this house has an, a half in ground door into the basement and a deck over top of it. Not just a walk-in basement. And that's what really, why I realized I was screwed when I was moving this thing. So I had a walk-in basement. It was going to be easy, but yeah. So. <laughs> Must dig deeper. Uh, so my father excavated some lands with his Kubota. <laughs> um, yes, he, he, he sort of did it by himself. I was like, OK, we got to go dig up some more land. And he's like, oh, that'll be easy. We'd do that. He got out the road to tiller, filled it up. Now, the rack sat outside, actually, for two days. Um, <laughs> but, it, but it's empty. It's just, uh, and of course, that rack, I don't want to know what it would, it would take to destroy that. Um, that thing's built too well. So, and this, this was the squeeze. Uh, yeah, so that was mostly because it was sitting on some plywood and it was pressing up against that, but there's, there was probably only like an inch of space. Uh, so, and it, it was a very tight squeeze. So, like an inch on that side, an inch on that side, two ton hoists to lower it down. And so, uh, moving all of the other pieces into the basement, I uh, weighed everything except the very large uh, chassis, and I estimated the rack itself probably weighs about 800 pounds. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> and finally, lowered it down straight into the basement, and the, the rack, the heaviest part is in the basement, and you can see the other two chassis right there. So. And what, what was learned? <laughs> so always make sure you have a plan. Seriously. <laughs> um, measure twice, move once. I, I tried to move twice, then measure once, then move again, then measure again, then finally fit it underneath the deck. Um, Listen to your mother, get a warehouse. Um, 
And no matter what others tell you, 1,500 pounds of mainframe will move itself if the floor isn't perfectly flat. <laughs> I learned that later, that the uh, basement floor is uh, slightly curved, and pushing it to one side of the basement was like an uphill battle, and then the other side it was like, oh crap, stop rolling. <laughs> so. And then reassembly started. So my father helped me lift the two chassis in and everything else. So I was able to get it myself, power supply units. Uh, this is what basement looked like covered in parts and pieces. Uh, just a ton of I.O. modules, you know. Uh, and basically finished. Uh, I quite honestly took no notes because after taking two photos, I realized, oh, there's a bunch of numbers and stuff on the stickers on the connectors. They're probably labels. I'll just forget about taking notes. And they, in fact, were. So all cut the length. They label where U wise in the rack they are, so which module they're in. Uh, then they uh, label which module this way they're in, and then, and then which connector in that module they're in. So it's quite nicely labeled. It was a breeze to reassemble. Uh, and there, um, it's like it's like one it's like a quarter inch socket size and one or two Allen keys to take apart this entire machine. Very very easy. Um, second roadblock was a bad thermal compound, and apparently I was told this was a problem around the time this machine was made. Uh, basically, I, I assume it's the anodizing on the heat sinks or something, and basically the heat sinks fall off when you remove the I/O cards. And yeah, they, they, when removing I.O. modules, heat sinks appeared. Uh, <laughs> not what I expected. I uh, knew it was, wasn't a good sign. Uh, almost every module had this problem other than like two S-Con cards. So, uh, and repasting these, well, cheap, like $5 in paste, it, it took hours. Um, because you have to go in, scrape off the dyes of the chip with razor blades, and it's, it's a very delicate process not to chip those dyes. So if you have one of these machines, check it. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess if you're going to disassemble it, you'll know. Um, third row block is power. Came with that plug. I had access to that plug. So yeah, I had to get three phase to single phase. Um, Originally wired for three phase, but in the uh, the installation manual, it, it said you can do single phase. So, uh, and a friend of mine had this machine. He said, "Oh yeah, just wire up the first two phases, ignore the third, and you're fine." Phase one to hot, phase two to neutral, ground, and you're fine. And he's an electrical engineer, so I trusted him. Uh, and requires 220 at 30 amps, uh, not a maximally configured machine. You can only run a certain level of machine, but mine wasn't maximally configured, so I'm, I'm fine. Uh, so power, but, but what is that on the screen? Can anybody tell me what that is on the screen? No, well, yes, it is OS2, but what is that specific window there? License agreement, yep. <laughs> Time to play the waiting game. I think it takes about 15 minutes. I haven't been so keen enough to record time, so yeah. And it's fine if you're going to spin up a machine and leave it on for the next 10 years, but if you're going to be turning it on and off over a couple weeks, it gets tiresome. <laughs> you know. Uh, so power on. Uh, at work, just fine. The fan spun up, sounded like I was standing next to a jet. It was great. Um, so then the fourth roadblock is user error. Um, when trying to do a power on reset, giving me tons of I.O. errors. Uh, and I, was, I re rearranged some of the modules, so I thought maybe that was why. I was checking stuff. Um, I realized none of the lights were coming on. I, I didn't know if they just didn't come on until it initialized. So I played around on the ThinkPad for hours. Um, and it solved nothing. I finally decided to go around back and check some of the power cables and realized the power supply was just sat in. I didn't push it all the way in and tighten it in. So, And of course, I think it was only one power supply, and it was the one that was hooked to the power supply that I was currently using. So, oh well. So, there we go. Much better. Lots of lights. Blinky lights. So, um, fifth roadblock was IOCDS. <laughs> 
this, this is where the real learning came in. Uh, I, I knew moving heavy stuff was difficult, but I didn't know what an IOCDS was. So, um, so I had to create a new one. I knew that because what they had configured, they had all their old configuration in there, all of their DASD configuration. So I mean, if, I have, if anybody gets into their machine, I can send you what they had hooked to it. You say, I assume they still have all that DASD because they didn't sell any or else this PowerPoint wouldn't be so long. Um, so uh, I learned how to do that so many PDFs later, uh, help with someone at, from someone else that knew nothing about IOCDSs either, uh, just sort of throwing ideas back and forth. Uh, finally created a, an IOCDS that didn't throw an error, didn't necessarily work, but it didn't throw an error. So um, yeah, and so there's, there's the old IOCDS, huge, long thing with tons of stuff. That's, that's the new one. Not, I didn't need all of that. Um, so, or I didn't have all of that. I wish I did, but. Uh, so time to load over FTP. So I thought, wait, 